I needed a break from my psychotic family, if only for the summer, and so, so I decided to go as far upstate as I could till I reached New York City. Thankfully, I had a friend I could stay with, and they even helped me get hooked up with a job where they work at some carnival that opens up in the evenings. Not my first choice, but hey, I could spend time with a friend, watch movies on my phone, and pretty much get paid to do nothing. At least that's what I thought would happen. Apparently, this friend of mine had already been delving into the weirder side of our world, and as soon as the first nine on the job came up, they found out that there's really no escaping the little shadows all over our world. Once you see it, you really just can't escape it. Our first night consisted of my friend driving us to our destination. For the sake of the story, we'll call her Red, since she has red hair. Basic, I know. Red and I went way back, and even went to school together. We joined a lot of the same geek and nerdy clubs like robotics or gaming club, and thankfully kept in touch. She said she'd always wanted to go to the big city and make a name for herself. I guess she didn't expect it to be this line of work. As we passed all the beautiful lights that is the nightlife, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread. I'd always seen Red smiling, laughing, or generally just being a dork. But tonight, she seemed serious. She seemed straight to the point, with only the occasional joke here and there to stir the pot. We made our way down all the streets until finally she spotted a parking garage and pulled in. We found a spot, though she didn't seem to pay anyone for it, which was strange. Maybe it wasn't something that happened here? I'd never really driven a lot myself, so I have no idea. We adjusted the cheap gray uniforms Red had prepared for both of us. I still have no idea how she got my measurements, but hey, shopping for men has always been easy. We made our way across the street and down an alleyway, stopped by a homeless man that muttered something. Red scoffed. Ben, we're on duty tonight. Just open the door and make sure nothing slithers up. The homeless man grinned, and I knew it was going to be an interesting night. Instead of regular teeth, he had nothing but jagged canines. We opened a door to the right and made our way into some old back room. Red turned to me and handed me the rest of our equipment that was laying on a plastic table just waiting for us. A handgun, a baton, taser, handcuffs, bear mace, and a large knife. Now keep all of this on you at all times, and just take it easy, alright? I know you're into some weird shit here, so we just gotta keep our heads down and do this by the book, okay? She said to me with a dead serious tone I'd never really heard before. Red? What exactly are we guarding? I thought this was just security for some carnival, I responded as I got my equipment on. Most of our guests are normal, but... A few pay premium, and the owner isn't exactly normal either. Just just trust me and follow my lead, alright? She gestured toward another door, and I followed. I did trust Red. I mean, she's one of my best friends, and she's never given me reason not to trust her. She even knew about me, my family, and our own dabbling in the occult. We made our way out the door and found ourselves on the grounds of a massive carnival. It lit up the night sky like you wouldn't believe. But strangely enough, I don't remember seeing any tall buildings or skyscrapers next to the carnival. And it seemed to go on for a while. I followed Red past hundreds of guests, shows, rides, and more. When we finally reached the front of the carnival, we took seats near a ticket booth as two men got up to leave, thanking us for taking over. Once we sat down, I saw in front of us was the familiar street buildings, and even a rat that skittered by to show that it was still New York City. I didn't understand. Everyone still looked human. They paid for their tickets at the booth in front of us and went on their way. Every now and again, someone would get rowdy and me and Red would get up to handle it or show that this was not a place for roughhousing. And after the first few hours, Red and I had pretty much just started playing cards, enjoying a soda or two provided to us by other staff and occasionally shouted at guests here at the front that got a bit too rowdy. I was surprised. So many people kept coming, but hey, it was a pretty interesting looking carnival. Then the clock struck 10.30 exactly, and our first VIP showed up. It was a man in a three-piece dark suit, 
looking ex exceptionally professional, though he wore black shades and a black hat as well when it was already dark out. Look alive, don't speak, and stand at attention, Red muttered to me. I listened and secretly thanked my family for being so focused on mannerisms when I was a kid. This man approached us, seeming to peer at both our very souls, looking to Red. Not one for me, I take it, he said in a deep and guttural voice while gesturing to me. Nope, all mine. Though, we have a lovely selection tonight, sir. I think you'll find it to your liking. Red smiled and bowed her head slightly. I followed suit, bowing my own head a bit before looking back up. Splendid, the man grinned, showing about a hundred fine, pointed, needle-like teeth. One VIP three ticket, if you don't mind. Please, also give my regard to Miss Bethany. The man said, as Red handed him a silver ticket with the number three imprinted on the side, and the man handed Red what looked like at least a thousand dollars in cash. Remember to follow all our rules, sir, and have a pleasant evening. Red bowed her head again, and I followed. The man nodded and proceeded into the carnival. We took a minute and sat back down before I looked to Red. So, are we going to talk about this? I told you I wanted to take a job and get away from all this weird shit for a while, you know? A sense of normalcy. This was the best I could do. But you expected me to not put you up when you said you needed to get away from your weird culty family? Come on. That's not what friends do. Besides, this is the most normal I can offer. At least until we get called to watch over a cleanup. Red sighed. Cleanup? I asked. Though... Part of me could guess. I tell you what, I'm gonna go grab us a cup of coffee. Sanchez makes the best and even has some Colombian grounds he uses. Take over for a bit. Tickets are right here along with the prices. She gestured to a drawer filled with silver tickets listed as VIP 1 through 5. If anyone comes up, just remember to bow your head only. Be respectful, but not passive. And if they get rowdy, let them know security is happy to throw them out. Do not make too much conversation, or any at all. Keep it strictly business. I'll be back in a few minutes. If you get nervous, use the radio to call me, or just flick on the TV to your left. I put Netflix on it a while back. Red clasped my shoulder and smiled before leaving to go get the coffee. I found myself questioning a lot. Just what exactly were these tickets for? Clearly we gave them to certain guests who could pay that high a price, and based on that last man's teeth, I guess those that bought it weren't here for balloon animals and funhouse mirrors. Just my luck. Another guest arrived not five minutes after Red had left. I stood up, sweating a bit as I did. This was the first time I'd ever really looked to a creature of the dark without any protection beyond what I had on myself. No guards, no friends, no occult protection, just... Me, bulletproof glass, and weapons I had. I admit, I was terrified. And I may have bowed a bit too low, however, the guest seemed only to laugh. He was rather tall, nearly seven feet in height, and leaned down to look inside at me. He wore a massive trench coat, covered all but his eyes with a bandana, and wore a large caddy hat to cover the top of his head. His eyes were too lime green. Almost like that of a fish. The smell of sulfur and rotting eggs came from this guy constantly. A new guard? Well, hello there, sweetie, he said in a rather feminine voice. Honestly, I couldn't tell if it was a man or woman looking at them. How can I help you today? I answered, trying to remain firm. You just got hired tonight, he asked again, seeming to smile under all that fabric. I was about to answer, but remember Red said not to make conversation outside of business. I cleared my throat. <clears throat> uh, what can I get for you today? The creature seemed to frown. Smart, unfortunate. VIP 5, if you don't mind, sweetie. The creature dropped a stack of cash into a little compartment to the right. Counting it out, it was at least 20 grand. But the weirdest part of that? It wasn't a hand that dropped the money. It was a tentacle. I quickly grabbed the ticket with a five printed on it and slid it out to the beast. Remember our rules. 
<clears throat> my voice cracked before I cleared my throat. Remember our rules, I said with much more strength behind my voice, and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Praise be to the old ones. Do let Bethany, dearest, know she is a true saint. The creature moved inside the carnival and beelined it for the funhouse mirror's attraction. Finally, Red returned after a while. I had already started up a crime movie on Netflix. The Irishman, to be specific, it honestly reminded me of my dad. Mafia movies are the best in general. I explained that there was a guest with tentacles, and Red nodded. Ah, uh, Mrs. Devoy. She's a big spender, really into Cthulhu and shit. Rumor is she made a deal with them, and that's where she gets all of her money. Is it she? I was a bit mind blown by this. I know, right? Red responded before handing me my coffee. We enjoyed the next two hours in peace and quiet. No one really got rowdy, even as people kept coming in, and we got to enjoy most of the movie. It was like old times, cracking a few jokes, sharing some cheap carnival popcorn, and just having a good time. Still, part of me kept wondering the exact nature of these tickets. Finally, we got a call. Security post three. We need supervision for a cleanup at the haunted house six as soon as possible. Please respond. Over. The radio said as Red grabbed it. Security post three here. We here. Ensure VIPs know to check back with other posts for tickets. We're on our way over. Red gestured for me to follow. And I did. We locked up the security post and headed into the carnival. People were still laughing, playing games, or screaming on roller coasters. It was all pretty normal, and soon we got to the front of the line to a haunted house. We made our way into a staff entrance, and I followed as Red navigated our way to one particular section. Some stupid Frankenstein table with fake body parts. However, the wall was closed so that the track next to us couldn't see. Had I not been used to the weird stuff, I think, I think this is where I might have quit or maybe died. On one end of the table, there were fresh body parts, pieces from two separate guests, and one of our VIPs from earlier, the man with the needle teeth. He sat at one end, fork and knife in hand, napkin tucked under his chin into his suit, and a glass of white wine to his right. It was weird seeing it like Something out of an old horror movie where the monster casually munches on someone with utensils, like some upper-class individual. He casually carved away at a torso of a guest, still very much alive but weakened. The guest reached out, muttering little cries for help as the creature munched away at his insides. I looked at Red, who merely watched. Did you have a pleasant evening, sir? She asked the creature. Indeed. You are correct in assuming this was my palate. I'm most pleased with the stock tonight. Very fresh. In fact, I think my eyes were bigger than my stomach. I only had these two. He took one last bite, and finally wiped his mouth with a napkin before drinking the last of his wine. Hmm. He held up a finger to ask for a moment. Once the wine was gone, he smiled. I believe I'm indeed finished for the evening. I believe this is in accordance with all major rules of the carnival. Yes. He asked while raising his brow still wearing those stupid tinted glasses. As long as our normal guests are properly dealt with, Red gestured towards the still living man. Ah, oh, yes, of course, my dearest apologies. The man started before placing his arm above the guest's neck, after dragging them to the edge of the table, and quickly swinging down to break the man's head clean off. Sorry, I prefer my meat still breathing. <laughs> well then, shall I attend to anything else, or are we good to go? Your ticket, please. Red held out her hand. The man came towards us, and I couldn't help but twitch, as my hand was near the gun I had been given. I don't think he noticed. Maybe he didn't care. But he handed Red his ticket. Red tore a piece and handed it back. You know where the exits are. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, sir. You as well. The man nodded before heading towards a wall. As he was about to hit it, he shifted into a gray mist and vanished. Red, I inquired before other staff in hazmat suits arrived and began cleaning up the blood and placing the pieces into disposal bags. To keep them from killing like crazy, the carnival gives them a hunting ground, as long as they follow strict rules, Red explained before looking at me. 
Think of it as keeping everyone safe by offering up a few. It's the best we can do. She sighed. Before the radio went off and we got a call about another incident. Come on. This one will need a little more force. It appears a guest is very keen on breaking the rules. We left the haunted house and made our way off to the back of a food court section. I didn't know if it was because I'm used to it and desensitized or maybe I'm just naturally fucked up like the rest of my family. But all this made sense. It was pragmatic. We finally made our way to our destination. There was a homeless guy with symbols carved all over his naked body. He had horns growing out of his head, goat legs instead of human ones. He turned to us and two other security teams and smiled. Beneath him was the body of a kid. Couldn't have been older than 16, maybe. Greetings, officers, the man snickered. I'm just about finished here. I just need one more to satisfy my urges. Surely you don't mind, he said while holding back laughs and carving new occult symbols on his own body. You paid for a VIP 2 ticket, sir. Teenagers are VIP 4 and up. Furthermore, this is your fourth kill. VIP 3 get four kills. You need to hand over your ticket and leave, Red stated harshly, causing the man to glare at us. You disgusting humans. Think you can order me around? Me! I'm summoning God himself here. You have the privilege to witness such a thing and you dare to order me. I think not. The man turned violently, and suddenly a stream of fireworks began to go off. He charged at us, but didn't get very far, as the other security, including Red, quickly pulled their guns and unloaded every last bullet they had into him. He was down in an instant, and the security teams only shook their heads. Christ fucking Fay! Always gotta be my way or the highway. One of the officers scoffed before calling for a cleanup crew. We gotta get back, Red stated to the other officers, who all nodded in agreement. When we were back at our booth and opened back up, I looked at the time. Nearly two in the morning. So, Red, we, um... Killed a guy back there, yeah? The Fay, and yeah. Red nodded before loading up Hulu and putting on South Park. They usually get pretty rowdy because how dare we enforce rules here... When they're just so goddamn superior, she shrugged. Guess you've killed a few of them, I asked. Yeah. You got clean hands or what? She continued before grabbing some popcorn as the show started. Oh, no. I shook my head. The family into the occult definitely does not have clean hands. Board game night or even Friday movie night was usually replaced with offering up sacrifices... Kidnapping new sacrifices. We offered at least four more tickets that night. We went through a lot of South Park shows and even had some fast food delivered at one point. The pay for that night was around $200. As we drove home and finally got to Red's apartment, I found myself staring at the uniform for a while. There was some blood on the bottom right that I hadn't noticed and I wondered how long it had been there. Was it the Seder? that died? Maybe... Maybe when the guy was eating pieces of people in the haunted house. I'm not sure. Do you want to stay on for a bit? We work pretty much six days a week, all night shift. Red asked as she leaned in the hallway near me. I don't think I had a straight answer. Really, though... What else did I have? Sure thing, Red. I think I'll stay at least for the summer. I won't lie and say it's fun, but but I at least am glad I wasn't handling tonight with a stranger. I saw her smile, a real, genuine smile, for the first time in a while. It was nice. The pay was good, even if it was dangerous. Still, that was just the first night. I can only imagine what a Friday night will bring us. I'll be sure to share what happens with you all. Wish me luck. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's podcast. 
You can find Mr. Creepypasta Storytime on any kind of podcasting platform if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast already, you can find Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube. <laughs> a huge thank you to all you guys who show support by subscribing to the channel or following the podcast and coming back episode by episode. I really appreciate that. And I really want to tell you all thank you for what you've done. If you always want to find more from me, you can on Instagram at Billy the Skeleton. That's me, Billy the Skeleton, all one word. That's the only Mr. Creepypasta account there. And on Twitter at Mr. Creepypasta, then the number zero. I'm also on Patreon. You can find a whole bunch of other people supporting on Patreon in the description down below. But there is a very, very special thank you to these people in particular. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Creepypasta Adam, Ken Lando Higuchi, Mazakin, Champinsky, The Red Oak Shield Virus, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Chance Burton, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Maceo, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, S-Man, Kirisuba, Bad Honey, Someone You Love, Said the King 56, Somber Puppet, Wolfie Nums, Shadow Morningstar, Sean Mills, Jesse Gonzalez, Mad Marstomp, Z Kearley, Cassie Core, Mr. Thud, and Patrick Schoolmeister. These guys are the real MVPs, and all of you who are listening are also the real MVPs. Stay safe, everyone, and sweet dreams.